Before we start this podcast, let me invite you to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, YouTube, or any podcast. Hello, pups and kittens, and welcome to another fun-filled episode of The Groomer Next Door. I'm your co-host, Chris Green. Sitting next to me is the haunted Sarah. Is that supposed to be a compliment, but hello? Yes. Okay. Yes, it is. Well, you are actually joining us on episode 150. Can you believe that? 150 times we've done this, plus all the other stuff we've done. I mean, we've really put some content out there. And episodes that never made it. And episodes that never made it, exactly. <laughs> the, the unheard of. Which is weird how they just deleted it out of nowhere. Oh, and it was like, they were always the ones that we really pushed the envelope. It was mm. probably a good thing it deleted. Yeah, right. But they just knew, okay, you know, you guys kind of went too far Yeah, over. you took it one step too far, sucka. Yeah, I know. I, I thought that was always strange. And that's why if you actually look in our, our actual episodes catalog, it says more than 150. And the simple fact is because, well, we've got all kinds of weird stuff that happened. That was all in the early, you know, about 100 episodes ago kind of time. So most of you, you know, probably weren't part of this podcast listening to it at the time. And like I always say, it was a little hard to listen to back then. We didn't, uh, we didn't have all the glitz and glamour. We didn't find our voice yet. So, anyway, so let's dive into our fact of the week. Now, of course, it is still before Halloween, depending on when you're listening to the podcast. It may have been... There's always time for Halloween. Well, there's always time for Halloween, exactly. So, this week, on our fun fact, again, on Halloween, Stephen Clark holds the record for the world's fastest pumpkin carving time at 24.3 seconds. Smashing his previous record of 54.72 seconds. The rules of the competition start the states that the pumpkin must weigh less than 24 pounds and he must car he or she must carve it in a traditional way with required at least eyes, nose, ears, and a mouth. Now I think that 24 pounds is a little under that. Come on, let's get the 50 pounders in there. Now, and I want to know, did he gut it or was it? I bet it's easy. No, it's probably already gutted. Then where's the fun in that? I want to see this guy, you know, ripping open the top, taking all the the guts out, and being able to carve all that in 24 seconds. That'd be awesome, right? Right? That's the hard. That's the worst part for me. For the entire pumpkin stuff is the gutting. I don't like the slimy feeling. I love it. Dr. Uh, Green, Dr. Green, paging a, Dr. Green. It's a texture thing for me. Oh, I love it. And then throwing the seeds at you. That's fun. Speaking of which, we're probably going to have to carve pumpkins today. Cause oh, that's right. We have not done that. We've been, I still think we have a week until Halloween. No, we no, don't. we got two days, actually, from the time we're recording. So, and, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, Diving into what our episode's all about this week, it's what to expect when adopting from a rescue. Now, this is very important because a lot of people are a little unaware of the little things that can happen when you actually adopt your pet from a rescue. And this is not a bad thing. This is actually a really good thing. So you're all in for a lot of information, and it's really good information. So with that said, let's dive into our weekly roundup. The weekly roundup, yeehaw. This week on our weekly roundup, we have possibility one of our wonderful rescues that are, it has a home, hopefully. Yeah, we're definitely, definitely crossing our fingers. Um, he's going through a tummy spat right now, and so we have to get his tummy up to par. But the person who wants to adopt him um, has a very hyperactive puppy. Right. And uh, he just got neutered. So he needs to heal a little bit before exerting himself with another cat or any other playmate. 
Um, Double Double is a very sweet and loving cat and loves everybody, everything. I'm hoping that this will work. Um, I'm hoping the dog's not too much for Double to handle. If not, then we'll try Spencer too. Right. But Spencer's not exactly a I want to love on you when you are here. But Double is. Double likes animals, other animals, and loves people. But not Spencer as much a, loves... a, not a not a cuddler. He's Spencer's not a cuddler. No, he's not. He's I want to be around you, but that's as far as I go. He's a cat. That's the best way of putting it. He's a cat. Well, our other cats, they come up on us and, and love on us. It, it's it's always really hard to to really determine how a cat's reactions are going to be. I mean, look at Spencer was bottle fed and very homegrown in a sense. And you would think that by that nature, he would be nothing but a cuddle bug. And he's not so much. Meh. And then you look at, at other cats like Oliver and even even Toil and Double Double, they're very snuggle. Um, yeah, of course, at times they want to go and venture off and play, but... For the most part, they're loving. Right, yeah. So, so it's, it's really interesting on how that works. Um, so that... And the person who is interested in actually adopting Double or whichever one of our fosters is absolutely 100% great with animals. So without any kind of doubt, she's perfect for it. And that's where the vetting really comes in is making sure that the right person actually adopts the right animal because it's, it is still part of our obligation, I guess you want to say. Um, when fostering, well, let's start off with rescuing, fostering, and then the adoption part. It's all, you know, seamless. It should be, right? Really, it should be. We should be able to be able to, to cover everything so that the right person gets the right animal. And how do you know the foster is a good foster is when they're able to tell you every little in and out of the animal's personality. Right. And be up front with you, but we'll cover more of that later. Right. Um, so we're looking forward to that. Um I had something else to cover oh, as well. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm prepared here. So, I'm not. Uh, it's okay. I just follow along. It's like, you know, shiny red ball. <laughs> Ooh, squirrel. So, <laughs> so um, we just Your found... Your hair's long. Yes, it is. So, so that, that's me right now. <laughs> yeah, she is ADD and all over the place. Um, so we just found out that through the Rolla Daily News, we were voted the best groomer in Phelps County. Yay. Now, I was really... That's really exciting to me. Now... This, this award is voted by the people in town. And, and it's not easy to vote either. No, it's not easy You only at all. get one vote if you do it online, and then you only get one vote via newspaper. mail, newspaper. Right. You have to fill out your ballot and then turn it into the newspaper. That means you have to actually get the newspaper, right. fill it out, drive yourself down, and hand it to somebody or put it in their ballot, uh, ballot box. Um... It's, so it's not very easy. It actually takes time. Every business in town that wins it proudly, proudly displays it because it we we all know, you know, the efforts that the actual community goes through to actually vote. And it is it is really honestly rewarding to know that you know, we the work that we did throughout the year, we already knew it was appreciated, but to actually go that extra mile, it was really cool. So I was really proud to get that again. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, there's a lot of groomers around. It's not like we're the only ones. So to win it was, you know, it's always it's always very rewarding. And last year, I mean, it, it's rewarding in itself to have so much business since we are like we don't have another grooming appointment till right before Christmas. We have people having to go out to another groomer just once so they can get on our books next time. And then they're doubling and or tripling. They're actually starting to book their stuff almost in I have one person booked out to June. Mar oh, you had the June. I was thinking the, the March June or ones. July. Yeah. And then um, others are booked out throughout an entire year. And they call off work on those particular days or request those days off from work just so that the dog can get groomed. If they could easily go down to the shop down the street, the shop up a street, they can go anywhere they want, they can go to the next town. Yeah. But they want to come see us because they know that we have our caring hands and we love all of our animals. And you know what? Also, I just thought about this. We had a great peer on Monday come in and it was new business, 
that had come back to us. No, uh, no, no. It was Newfoundland. He, oh, sorry, Newfie. Sorry. What did I say? Great Pier? Yeah. I'm thinking Zig. I don't know what I'm thinking. No, that Zig was it. That's Zig's new villain, too. I'm, I, I'm, I'm lost right now. Uh, we did have... Thank you. A Pick me up here. Help me out. <laughs> Come in. Thank Who you. Originally came to us and, and was not grooming with us, but grooming with another person, another person. inside of Shadowwood. Right. Um, they were not happy, and they left. Right. Um, Chris and this gentleman... Actually, we were actually recording a podcast, and he came up during That's one true. of our intermissions and started talking to us. <laughs> That's right. He was, his dog was in the car. Yeah, I said, "Oh, I know who you are. That's I right. Know you're, I know you. I know Molly. I know Charlie. I know them very well. I personally never been able to groom. Chris was never able to groom, but we've seen him. Right. How are they doing? How are you? And, and most of the time we know well aware that they have not been to us for right. over a year and a half, or haven't been to Shadowwood for over a year and a half. Right. Um, and he just smiled and said, have a good day. I was like, have a good one too. Give your pups a little pat for us, please. Yeah. And let it that way. Because we're not going to judge somebody for not bringing their dogs to us. No. And we're not going to judge somebody for not bringing their dog to Shadow One. Right. It's what their preference is. Um, and then he comes strolling in one day to Shadow One. Um, you were grooming Zega. Zega. Yeah. Um, it was literally little... six weeks ago. <laughs> you were blow drying her. And you stop doing it. And well, he pops into the room. Which is technically this area, you know, it, it, it it's is a hazard. If you're not wearing the right shoes, yeah. you're going to slip and fall. Dogs could be barking uncontrollably and hurt themselves right. because they see somebody new. It's just not a good situation bringing a customer back in the bathroom. Well, he room. didn't. He walked himself back there. Right. Because there's nobody <laughs> Which does front. happen a lot. Um, and he came back there, and I popped my head up because I'm I'm always invested in the animal. Whatever, whatever dog's there, I'm invested in that dog. Um, so as, as it should be. Oh, yeah, I know it should be, but <laughs> I, I think of it as that's what it should be. But I'm invested, and I'm, I'm having my time with with Zeg at the time. And I noticed somebody looking at me, and I I said, uh, "Can I help you?" And he asked me about about the dog I'm working on, and he proceeded to tell me about his dog and and his struggles that he's having with his dog. And you know, the dog has. You know, it's, it's definitely not a young dog, so it's got... Um, Massive yeah. hip dysplasia. Yeah, I was going to say paralysis I mean, and problems. Well, hip dysplasia is easier because people know that. True. <laughs> I was... Uh, um, really bad to the point where when she walks, her legs just go out to the yes, side. Yes, she bambies on ice. Yes, she does. So you got to be very scary. careful. it is scary. Yes. It really should take two people to walk this dog. One with a towel around her belly lifting her up, and the other one with a soft lead around her neck to try to get her to the spot without her bambian on ice <laughs> right and and you know it was it, I gave him all of the information I had and, and you know luckily we have such knowledge of doing this and having disabled dogs on a daily basis that it really is almost kind of talking about anything that you already know about because we do so let him know and he's he was immediately just said well I'm going up and I'm gonna make my appointment right now because you guys are gonna touch my dog and I was, you know, I was like, oh, cool, okay, great. And I forgot all about this. I had no idea that it was going on until... And you didn't know that they were prior customers yeah. either, uh, to an extent. It took a while for him to actually say that he was yeah. a prior customer. Yeah, he was just inquiring at the time. Yeah. And and then at the and end... And people do that. People, yes. they don't tell us the real reason that they're there. And they try to see if we will slip up and say something that they don't like. And we never do. We well, never we upset them. So they end up, oh, okay, well, I'm just going to book it with you guys. Well, if we've never seen the dog before, there's, you know, I don't know the business of what's going on outside of what we're doing. You know, our grooming is a separate entity of Shadowwood. So what goes on in the building is not really my concern nor yours. Mm -hmm. It's it's the animals that we see. They become our friends, and we're only concerned about them. And if they do go elsewhere for any reasons, and a lot of times when we do lose a dog, it's to another state. We yeah. very rarely see a dog go anywhere else. They're right. they're like, I'm sorry. And that's the hard part. It's like your best friend. You know, you know, every dog can be your best friend. And when they go to another state, it's like, oh, man, you know, we're losing our friend. You know, and it's kind of like growing up when, you know, your friends move to another place because their parents move or they go off to college. That's, yeah, that's how it feels. It is hard. But... And then another part that's hard for us is you know that they're not going to be taken care of as well as you could. Right. And, of course, they need to find another groomer, and you just hope and pray that they find a good groomer. Right. 
And and so you know, I had we we had our our massive amounts of dogs this week, and we had a massive amount of large dogs. I mean, with Zega closing the week, and with this guy's great peer starting the week. Newfie. What did I say? Great peer. I'm lost. We today. had a great peer. We did. We, have we one. did. I'm just lost. This. I'm lost at yeah, we've this had point. We had two Newfies. I, two great peers because uh, we had Amy. See, Amy I, was last I knew. Week, I knew that we had a lot, and it, it, it was more of a heavy week, meaning large, large dogs, the hundred plus pounders. So I'm, I'm at this point lost. But you know, it was a great, a great week when it comes to having you know disabled dogs that we gave the the treatment to, and and he seemed the happy. The royal treatment. The royal treatment. That's right. So um, with very massive week, getting you know somebody you know new coming in that I think we actually you know he booked two appointments after this. Yeah. So and but that's that's nice. It was nice. It was it was it was definitely a, a very victorious week. And then I have started now um, as of lately I have been starting to sell my dog toys I've been making. Very nice. And they are fleece soft dog toys. I'll be posting pictures on our Facebook later. Um, they are ordered. You can order them um, through our Facebook page. We'll get that all set up for you. I know I just dropped this one on Chris. Cause I was, was like, what are you talking about? I'm lost. I haven't even done I e-commerce was... on our website yet. We'll figure it out. But <laughs> I'll put pictures up and we can figure out a way. Um, but it has started off pretty good. I have over um, 100, almost 200 or 200 in Tug inventory, toys. and you've already gotten rid of like 40 at this point. Yeah, I've already sold about 40 of them, enough it's, to pay for the inventory. But yeah, um, they're fleece dog tug toys. They're easy and gentle on dog's gums, and they're fun to throw. I have one that has a tennis ball attached to it. So when you're playing tennis ball with your dog, instead of touching that nasty tennis ball that has slobber and dirt all over it, yeah. you can t you can hold on to the fleece part uh -huh. that isn't all slimy and gross <laughs> and then you can throw the ball for him and uh, it's really cool i like the handcuff ones the ones that are kind of rings that go together i don't know what you're what you're gonna call they look them. like a figure figure eight they almost. do look like a figure eight yeah and they're stretchier and there's I more room if your dog gets a little overexcited on biting and you want to keep your hands for far enough away these are great yeah. but i'll post some pictures i want to get some nice pictures it's nice outside today so we'll, oh, probably... we'll never get a shot today with everything that's still pending that we have to finish today oh, yeah, true. we're done <laughs> all right well with that let's move on to our g and d news i don't watch the news because i'm a kid all right coming to you from the g and d news desk we have two stories as we do this week we have a story of a high school football player who was paralyzed, who had overcome so much, and gets new service dog. And the second one, which I love, a new film festival all about our animals. So with that said, Claire, let's play a clip for everybody. 15 service dogs have new homes tonight, thanks to an organization helping people live more independent lives. We've been following Tyler Olson's story since he was paralyzed, playing high school football eight years ago. Shortly after the accident, he was teamed up with a service dog, Charlie, to help him do things like pick things up and open doors. But Charlie died in December from cancer. Last night, Tyler got a new service dog, Brogan. He was one of 15 service dogs from Helping Paws to graduate last night. The organization helps to train dogs to know 90 different cues over the course of two years. When helping Paws is needed, I encourage everybody that doesn't know about it to come and check it out and uh, just get involved. It's an awesome way to, to give back to the community and help people like me um, get, uh, get an angel. Now, as for Tyler, after his accident in high school, he went on to graduate from college. He now works full-time for a computer company close to his hometown in northern Iowa. High school sports can be so dangerous and, and yet so rewarding at the same time. I remember one time I went to a high school football game, saw one of the kids drilled so hard, and turned out he suffered a major concussion. Nobody knew it at the time, and concussions back then weren't really recognized. And you know, unfortunately, tragedy struck. Um, you know, this kid was, you know, a high school football player, and, you know, he gets paralyzed by, by playing a game that could have, you know, done so much for his, his life. And, um, you know, it, it's sad that his, his original service dog passed away, but great on the organization to, you know, get him a, a new friend to help him out. That, 
That's so rewarding to know that we have such great organizations out there. The service dogs mean so much to people, and more and more as studies go by, technically everybody should have a service dog. Everybody should have somebody, something there to comfort them, um, whether it be a physical ailment or tragedy, mental. but mental too. People are starting to uncover um, like depression. Yes. And depression means a lot more than what some people just think is sadness. It's actually several different layers of yeah. depression. Um, and it's, kind of like it's an onion. starting to become more and more common. Pretty much everybody has some level of depression. Right. So at some level, everybody really needs an animal. I like it. I think and everybody needs an animal in their life. Exactly. I really do. That even wasn't a joke. A cat. That was not even a joke. Even, that was serious. Even if it's just a cat or a hedgehog in, or a hedgehog in an apartment, everybody should have at least one animal in their life. I agree. I agree. Um, so good on them for for helping this kid out. Mm -hmm. um, next, you know, I, I hardly ever have a, a positive to say about Petco, but for the first time, I actually have to say good on you and. Um, I would love to attend this film festival. Yeah, see, Petco and PetSmart, they have a horrible Track advertising. Oh. Advertising, horrible. They don't ever show the good that they do in the community. Instead, they let the bad publicity take control, and it's not right. It's not. Um, there are so many fantastic people out there that love what they do at Petco and PetSmart. So, it's just, it drives me bonkers. They attach their they name don't. to so many different things, but they have such a terrible marketing. Yeah, there's not somebody out there saying, hey, look at what we're doing right. here. Yeah, they throw we're, their... They, we, we are throwing thousands upon thousands of dollars yeah. towards people. And then, yes, people think a couple thousand dollars isn't much, but for a couple thousand dollars for one community, it's a lot. But it's the corporate BS that they're that they're really, in, internal stuff that they put their employees through, which is what causes all of these problems. But that said, let's actually catch up and, and hear from this clip that came out from Sacramento, California. Claire? Lay the clip. And Bobby Mann is here from Front Street uh, Animal Shelter, the public relations manager. You brought a couple friends, I as usual. Friends. Who do you have with you? So I have Wade and Ray with me. They're two, a puppy and a kitten, that have actually been going through our foster care program at the Okay, shelter. so Wade is not available yet, but he will be soon? He will be soon, hopefully, and then Ray is so available cute. for adoption. Cats and dogs getting along. This is crazy. What's happening? I don't get it. <laughs> they love each other. They do. They actually grew up together. Oh, that's so really? Do I get to grab one? Sure. Okay, girl, I'll, I'll take a we little We had a cat-dog combo on the show the other day, and we had to kind of keep them a little bit separate so it's fun seeing them play together yeah. but you're here because we're celebrating uh, the relationship between dogs and humans with this film festival so you want to tell us a little bit about it we are so we are very honored to be a part of the first ever national dog film festival um, Tracy Hoshner who is the producer of this has been known nationally for her animal pet wellness uh, and she's bringing this tour to uh, Sacramento for the first time that's really cool and these are short little canine themed films right that people will get to see absolutely yeah. so it's really just highlighting the canine uh, uh, human bond and it allows people to it's a family friendly environment and allows people to see short films <laughs> and also animations about dogs I lost the, the kitty. kitty it's okay I lost the kitty. so where does the event the, the event travel to because we're lucky to have it here in Sacramento but where else has it been so it's been to 12 locations we're one of the last so New York Chicago Seattle wow. Los Angeles so a lot of main cities so mm -hmm. I mean it just as the new arenas coming in there's a lot of great artists coming in it's nice that uh, ventures like this are also coming to Sacramento well, I reached out and grabbed the cat now is the cat nice like grab. a grab yeah is, uh, is she a little uh, or is she a little upset that uh, uh, it's the dog festival. And well, actually, are cats allowed? Well, tomorrow is actually National Cat Day, so oh, I, I brought her. Oh, so I brought her along to share that the love as happened. well. Kitty, <laughs> okay, Bobby, you hold the animal. I'll, I'll hold it down. Hold hold it down. <laughs> this is getting a little yeah, it's dangerous. Crazy, it's crazy. Uh, who does the event benefit? Because I know there's some people that are really going to make out from this. Yeah, absolutely. So the event itself is actually sponsored by the Petco Foundation, who's been generous enough to put on the event, mm -hmm. and then through the 12 locations, they're <laughs> all helping. Uh, the proceeds help local shelters in the area and this one is going to be benefiting the front street animal shelter All right, so, that's so awesome. nice. and you have a like a special giveaway that's going on as well too which is which is pretty neat right we do the so tickets? well we have vip tickets for guests uh that are watching studio 40 but also thanks to our local sponsor uh, which is the last 
Astra Group, we actually are going to be able to offer 400 tickets for people that are wow. waiting in line. So if anybody can come down That's with your awesome. family free of charge with the VIP tickets today that we're giving away, VIP seating, VIP entry, so people are going to want to Okay, yeah, so the those. information on that, those two family four packs, no line, you're the first to go inside. Call the number uh, on your screen there, 452-1089, and we'll take callers four and five. Yeah, for this dog film yep. festival, which is fantastic. So awesome when you come by. Thanks so much. Thank Thanks, you for having and that, Yeah, that is amazing that we got the cats and dogs. I know, and thankfully the kitty survived the segment with you in charge. Exactly. I'm impressed. <laughs> All right, thanks again. I, I absolutely love it. I mean, as somebody who hopes one day as a ridiculous thing to just make an indie movie, which I know you look at me and go, I, I'm not a big fan of indie movies, but as somebody who would love to make one, I think that would be so cool to be able to make one, especially with animals, and be part of that film festival. That would be just absolutely awesome. That would be really cool too. <laughs> I mean, I, I think that, you know, there's tons of film festivals out there and and not really given any of them any kind of gripe. I think they're all great. And I think that each one can be located in different places. Some of them are just massive film festivals that, you know, obviously an independent director, it's, it's almost like a lottery win for them. This is going to give, you know, early filmmakers an opportunity to make pet related videos, even animated videos, and have a shot at actually producing something. Even if it's a small budget that you know goes to VOD or digital, but it'll still open up the floodgates for animal related movies. And I think honestly, I think we're on the, the verge of seeing a lot more of them. I, I think we've always seen our animated movies, you know, cartoons that go out there, but more of that needs to be done and more indie needs to be done because I think there's a, a real need for it and and a definite market for it all right well with all that said that concludes this week's version or edition of gnd news guess the breed with your host chris green Hello, contestant, and welcome to Guess the Breed. Hello. So, I thought this was going to be a really good breed to actually see if you can guess. Again, we're right here on the on the verge of Halloween, or, you know, like I said, maybe it's already passed. Who knows for some of you. <laughs> but I thought, you know what, we're going to actually do Guess the Breed, the Halloween edition. Which I do not know what that means, so. <laughs> okay. So, this breed, I will tell you an attraction that this breed is in, and I will give you a small synopsis, and then I'm going to actually give you the specs of the actual breed itself, okay? This breed comes from the Haunted Mansion at Disneyland Resort or, or, or Walt Disney World. The groundskeeper is in the actual cemetery with it, is a man who tends to the mansion's upkeep, but is stopped in his tracks when effectively joins the guest tour. In seeing the ghost materializing at night, he is seen standing just outside the graveyard gates, next to a lamppost raising a lantern in the shaking hand, and visibly terrified his blank dog accompanies him, presumably his pet, presumably his pet. In his other hand, he holds a shovel, which either aids in his groundskeeping or could suggest, alternatively, he is a grave robber caught in the act of, of the ghost. That's kind of how, how that works. That's the, the synopsis of what this character is. Now, to actually give you the specifics of this dog breed, this, um, it's not hypoallergenic. Lifespan is 10 to 12 years. The temperament is even-tempered, athletic, gentle, quiet, intelligent, and affectionate. The height for a male is 28 to 30 inches, and females 27 to 28 inches. The weight for a male is 60 to 88 pounds, and the female is 57 to 75 pounds. Do you have a guess? Bloodhound? Bloodhound is your guess. Oh man, I'm sorry. 
I knew I was going to throw you off because when I tell you what it is, you're going to be like, no, I thought the same thing. Is it like a, it's not a bird dog. It's a greyhound. I, I know, I was just like, that. I thought that was a, ha a bloodhound too. That's exactly what I thought. And I looked it up. And that's why I gave you the ideas from the actual um, detail of character from Walt Disney World itself. But that one has a really long, long ear. I know. So they got that wrong. All because they said it doesn't mean they're right. Well, I'm just telling so it's you. Not, it's not... Well, I give you specifics, though, of the dog. Well, yeah, but if you said if it was that one, I have that one in my head. I'll show I've you. I'll show you. Times. I'll show you everything later. But greyhounds do not have dropped ears that go straight down. I know. I know, but I, that's why I said it was going to be a curveball. No, it's not a curveball. So the people at Disney are wrong. <laughs> the greyhound is a breed of dog, a sight hound, which has been bred for coursing game and greyhound racing since the rise in large-scale adoption of retired racing greyhounds, it has seen a resurgence in popularity as a family pet. The speed of a greyhound can go up to 43 miles per hour. I can't even get that. I can't even get to 3 miles per hour by running. I thought it was a, I still think it's a cool dog. I and what's great too, the reason why they're so fast is because their back is arched. With the arch in the back, um, as they take off, they can extend out further and pull in quicker so therefore they can run a lot faster any dog with an arch in their back can definitely run quicker than any other regular dog well thank you contestant for playing guess the breed and now our feature presentation all right this is our main topic which is what to expect when adopting from a rescue now this all came about a couple weeks ago, as you know, we did an adoption event for all of our rescue kittens and cats. Now, I mentioned it briefly a few weeks ago that we actually had to decline an adoption. Now, this will happen on a lot of a lot of different rescues out there are are particular on how the who adopts and if the actual dog or cat is the right fit for you. Now, this is all specifically de derived for a certain reason, and that is to make sure that the animal that ha that's life has been saved is going to the right home. Now, you may think, oh, well, that's a little bit too much to ask, but it really does make sense. Now, I do have to say there are some places that they might have a little bit too much requirements, and I think that some rescues may have too little requirements. Um, for example, what happened in our situation. A gentleman came by, he wanted to actually adopt two of the kittens. He wasn't a young man by no means. And what was the first red flag for us was he didn't want to actually pick the cats up, didn't want to socialize with them. He just pretty much pointed and said, I'll take those two. Almost kind of like you would, you know, kind of going into a store picking up food. Meat. Meat, yeah. I was. Well, no, it makes yeah. gruesome, it's meat. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, it really was. I'll take that. I'll take two slabs of that kind of uh, attitude. That's not That's not a good good sign right there. No, he didn't want to hold them. He didn't care to know their names. He didn't care to know their background. They're saying those two, you know, box them up, we'll go. Exact words. And I said, well, do you not want to hold them? And he's like, no, I'm sure they'll do fine. They're just cats. Well, no, I'm sorry. In this day and age, we do not give animals out to people who say they're just whatever species they are. That's not the case here. These are meant to be loved. These are meant to be part of the family. Right. You don't just go and get a kid from a foster situation and just say, yeah, I'll take the blonde one. <laughs> now, Walt Disney used to do that, by the way. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll take the, the, the black-haired one. Let's go. Yeah. I don't care to know anything about it. I don't them. want to know anything. Just I'll figure whatever. it out later. Yeah, what really caught me and was... And if, if, if it doesn't work, then you just go outside. Right, and and that was the next thing, is um, he said, I just want an indoor-outdoor, or an outdoor cat. It'll be an outdoor cat anyway. Yeah, he said indoor-outdoor. Indoor-outdoor? Well, no. We can't have these animals as outdoor. We do have one, 
that will be good for an outdoor. She was already outdoor. adopted out at that time. Um, yeah. No, I don't think I think so. she was. I don't know. I don't know, but go on. And he wanted these two kittens. Right. Well, for one, Spencer was bottle fed. Lucky was on the brink of death. Yeah, hours. I was not giving these two up for somebody who didn't care. It's like I knew Lulu would be able to survive on her own. I know she would. She has her entire life. And she had some instincts of being outside. Neither one of I these I knew had no matter what, she could survive on her own. These two kittens? No. Right. No. I mean, I look at the guy. The guy's in full liver failure. You can tell by his eyes. Yellow. It's horrible. Um, but we actually took it a step further. We let him fill out the paperwork. We and, called on a reference. Right. And, and then it was going to be accelerated to a home visit to make sure that the, pro the house was up to standards for, this, for the two cats to go to. And then there was um, a phone call that I had to make to, make sh to actually get... Uh, it's called a vet... Uh, sorry. Go ahead. Was, <laughs> we had to Valid. get a, a vet clearance. Verification? Yes. Okay. We had to get clearance from the vet that uh, says that they are good owners. Right, that they properly take their animals in for proper checkups and she had treatments. Yes. He said he had a 16 year old cat that's you know about ready to pass away and he wanted to get two kittens. Okay well if you have a 16 year old cat there is 16 years of vet record somewhere. Right. And and I you know I really enjoyed being part of this, this process because um, I was able to learn a lot from doing this. Um, I spoke with his wife. His wife sounded really sweet, really nice, but you know, there was definitely some issues I had that they were not young. It was an upstairs house. That worried me because kids, especially like these two who <coughs> run everywhere and are always, always playing. And it's not like we're, we're bagging on old people. No, no, no. no. It's they get under your feet. Yes. This is more or less, this was me being concerned for their safety as well. This was, at, at that point, I was more concerned for them. So I was going, okay, but you know what? She seems really sweet. I'm going to go forward and I did vet verification. Unfortunately, I didn't get any kind of verification at all. We tried, you tried several different names. Yeah, I tried multiple names, multiple vets. Um, there was nothing. So unfortunately for that, it's kind of difficult. Now she asked me if they were declawed, and I said no. She was good. I don't believe in that. I, that was a that was a positive sign. But with there that, are animals at the animal shelter that would have best fit their wants. You know, the shelter does not do verification, and uh, there are cats that they pick up there that are okay indoor outdoor. Right. But not ours. Yeah, and that, and this is where going to a rescue has different specifics that you have to meet. Now, unfortunately, they were you know unable to adopt these two cats, but the only reason why they weren't able to adopt them was not because of their age, but because there was just not enough information that actually substantiated that they were the right pet parents for these. Now, there are other, and we went through this early on, way before the podcast, and that was with Katana. When you were looking at it, trying to adopt um, an Akita. Yeah, I, I was looking for an Akita for my dad, and <clears throat> excuse me, I contacted a rescue out in Tennessee, and they're a real nice rescue, real nice people, um, but they needed a home check. Well, okay, that's fine. And I said, well, what are the qualifications of passing a home check? So, well, we need a fenced-in backyard. A large fenced-in backyard and a large fence. Right. And I said, well, unfortunately, we do not have that kind, and I'm not planning on spending several thousand dollars to have a fence put in a back of a rental property. Right. And and didn't they actually want not only a fenced-in backyard but a kennel as well? Because I remember well, there being were a proper kennel. a proper housing outside. So I yes, any kennel. kind of well, yeah. It's an outside I, I thought, I thought kennel. it was fencing and kennel at the same time. I don't know. Go on. Keep, keep going. It's housing. Okay. Yeah. So a fence and housing for him um, because he's not, he's a runner. Okay. And I was like, well, okay, it's not going to work for us. 
Yeah, I don't care about the home check. You can come in and take a look. There's plenty of people here to take care of animals. Um, but I don't have a fence. So we weren't able to go through them. We had to go through a different avenue and we ended up adopting or rescuing her from a horrible lady. Um, so that's how we got Katana. Um, there is also another Akita rescue out in Arizona. It was the same way. They need a fence in backyard. Okay, well obviously that, they weren't the ones that we needed to go through to help fit our needs. It doesn't make them bad. It doesn't make it horrible. It's just we gotta go through different avenues. Right, and, and you know the next thing that, that you have to be concerned with are contracts. There are you know a lot of rescues have contracts, mm -hmm. and you have to be very detail oriented to understand what goes into these contracts. There is a Doberman Pinscher rescue that's located in California, and on their um, adoption contract. It states here very clearly that um, the Doberman being adopted will not be sold, given, or um, or given up to any other organization. So you can't just give it as a gift. You can't take this dog and rehome it on your own. Um, you can't take it to a shelter if you can't have it any longer. You, you have to go through this particular rescue and give the dog back. And they will handle payment whatever which way that they have to. They most likely will not get a refund because they spend a lot of money on these pets first. Right. Um, a good rescue will make sure that the pet is okay no matter what. Right. No matter how much you get upset that they won't let you do whatever they want, whatever you want to the animal. It's because they care about the animal more than they care about you. And there's, and that's not a bad thing. Now, you know what what really comes to mind and brings this back up. And I don't know if you remember this or not. It just jog, jogged into my my brain and said hi. Um, back in 2007, Ellen DeGeneres was part of this. There was um, a really big big thing that came out back then. Um, she had adopted a dog and for whatever reason I can't remember what it was she ended up giving it to her hairdresser I no do you remember her housekeeper um, actually it was hairdresser I thought I thought housekeeper too well she said ha housekeeper so unless they got this story wrong oh well, I'm, I'm looking at the tran I'm looking at the transcripts from a, a radio interview that she did and it said hairdresser anyway she gave her the dog away doesn't matter to whom but the dog the the person, the, the rescue that actually uh, adopted the dog out to Ellen came in and they actually took the dog back from the actual housekeeper yeah, they call them, they, they do a call to see how the adoption's going, right. like every rescue should. Right. And Ellen said, oh, well, I was just too busy. I couldn't, and I gave it to, I thought she said housekeeper, because I don't see anybody I remember, I being buddy-buddy with their hairdresser Well, in to... In, to see them enough times to know them that they can have a dog, so that's why. But well, the the thing is that part of the contract. What I'm trying to get to is part of the contract is that the rescue adopts out to you, and you're unable to actually give the dog without going through the actual rescue again. You have to go through the rescue to actually be able to give the dog to somebody else, to lateral in a sense, and that whole controversy became a big thing. So this is what my point I'm, I'm getting to is be very careful when you're actually doing a contract. There's nothing wrong with those contracts. Um, but what you have to be careful for is reading every line, every single portion of it. Because, you know, you may have to move for some reason. And it may have something stipulated in the contract that they have to come out and see the new place. Or you may have to go out of town for a year or something. You have to move for business and come back and you'll give it to a family member or a friend to watch and without doing all the proper work you actually could have some issues with it. And that's where I'm going to. It's, it's the, the whole point of, the, of this story is there's nothing wrong with going through a rescue. Well because not only going through a rescue means yes you have to go through all their guidelines 
but you also have to realize what they have gone through yes. for that animal. They have rescued that animal. That they have put in a ton of money into their medical, mm -hmm. making sure that they are healthy enough to be adopted out. They have gone through rigorous testing um, to see if they're okay with children, yes. other animals. That means that they put their own family at risk. Yeah. Uh, that's what we did. Yeah. Claire knows what to do when coming up to a new animal. Mm -hmm. And it is a risk bringing a new animal into our life. Yes. With having a child. And it is the same with having other animals. Exactly. Um, all of our fosters are good with other animals. And if not, we make special arrangements. But there's always that one point in time when we figure out yes or no. Yeah. And that's an immediate thing. I mean, it happens within the first few minutes. But... It takes several hundred dollars for a pet to be evaluated. Um, if they're not spay and neutered, they have to get the spay and neutered. Um, if they have worms, the worms have to be treated. If they have some kind of other parasite, ringworm or something, that has to be treated and it will go away. Um, ear mites. Um, uh, dental problems. If they need teeth pulled or if they have a broken leg. Hundreds and hundreds of dollars go into these animals. So when they ask you Spay for, and neuter. I already said that. Did you? I'm sorry. I You're missed it. On, I'm making sure I'm, I'm checking <laughs> everything. So um, if they go and ask you for a $150 fee or a $250 fee to adopt the animal, just know they spent a lot of money that you will be spending if you got the animal from a shelter that aren't vetted. Right. If you get an animal from the shelter, you're going to have to pay $200 for the neutering or the spay. You're going to have to spend um, $15 for the deworming, depending on which kind of worms they have. You're going to have to spend $20 for the flea and tick control. You're going to have to spend money on the office visit, which is typically about $40 to $60, depending where you live, for the vet visit. So now that, that $150 and $200 adoption fee doesn't seem so bad. No, no. Because I mean, they're already vetted. Yes. And you're not going to, you know, by no means are we ever downing rescuing. I mean, rescues are the best way of getting your animal, your, your future pet. You, you get want. less problems that way. You and do. then if something does happen to your animal that they did not catch, um, they are always right there on top of it, making sure that the animal gets the proper vet care and make sure that that animal is okay. And if something freakish happens and the dog has, or the cat has to be put down, unfortunately, they will make it right. Yeah. Any good rescue. rescue yeah. And, and look, you know, that's, that's what we want you to understand is being in the pet rescue type world that we're in, we see so much on a... I would say daily to weekly situation and we're not you know I had this conversation the other day we're not the type of people who rescue and then dump off to somebody else we see everyone through which is time-consuming I mean I, I thought this year we were gonna you know go over a hundred animals just the way we started yeah um, but with the the fostering part that's the part that can be very time-consuming every foster takes on the responsibility of feeding each animal out of pocket, um, out of pocket the fosters themselves um, if if it gets too bad and they have a, a plenished pantry of food that they can go to to help their fosters out that's great but sometimes there's just not enough people to do that with um, or not enough uh, funding or yeah donations donations there we go that's the word donations so therefore the fosters take it on right now at the peak of our fosters that we've had we were spending all, close to sixty dollars a week on them mm -hmm. and now that's dropped to thirty because we did get half of them adopted out um, but that's expensive sixty dollars a week yeah on pet supplies and that means paper towels yes. disinfectant because yes. cats never seem to get everything in the box the first time <laughs> litter which is litter. ridiculously crazy and they had to have special food yes. make sure that they're growing properly um, you can't just go grab a special kitty <laughs> you can't do it they need better food and that's another thing that uh, most rescues are very um, aware of is that the proper feeding is what's going to be important 
Yes, you can't just go down to the grocery store and pick up Old Roy. Nope. And feed it to them. No, like that Doberman one I was talking about out in California. I said proper food, not whatever dog food. It has to be a special level dog food. Grain free. Well, it, it might not necessarily grain I would, free. I would imagine. But a higher end that's not old right. Right. You know, that's not beneficial. Right. You know, something. Doesn't like have a green in it. <laughs> yeah, the racial ray stuff or, you know, stuff like that. There's some good stuff out there that's not, you know, ridiculously expensive. Pure Balance has been amazing for our dogs. Yeah, and I mean, some dogs actually need, you know, the special type foods, and some need, some actually, I mean, some need very special yeah. food, and we're talking about single source protein. But here's food. here's where a rescue really comes into play, and that is, you go to, and I'm not downing any shelter whatsoever. Don't get me wrong, but you go to a shelter, and they're not going to really have the the knowledge of this dog or this cat requires this. This is everything to a T of what this animal needs. See, shelters have to get get through animals as quick as possible. The turnaround has to be high. Now, each shelter, and this is the reason why the kill shelters are so high in killings, is because they do not have enough food to feed the animals. So they don't have enough time with the animal to actually get to know them enough to place them in a proper home or give somebody a little extra knowledge. Right. My Akita came from the shelter. My um, not this one. Not, not Katana. Ronin. Ronin came from a shelter. Ronin was standoffish, but we knew Akitas, so we bring him on in, and he ended up being a great dog. Um, but some people wouldn't know that right away, and if it wasn't us that came in and got him, he would have been put to sleep the next day. And if shelters got enough donations to feed their animals there, the animals can live longer. The Rolla Animal Shelter here only gets uh, a they very don't get much. They get less than two hundred thousand dollars a year to pay salaries for this officers, upkeep on the building, and food for the animals. If they went with the actual amount of food that was given to them, allotted by the state. They would have to put dogs down left and right. Right. Because they can't afford to feed them. But teamed up with a nonprofit like Peacall, they are able to keep dogs there all the time and for a long period of time. And that's where the misconception it is a kill shelter, yes, but the only reason why it is by state regulations, and which is all regulated by the USDA. And they don't have to put down dogs. The only time they put them down is if they're they actually they they're they're ill. Or yeah. And now that with the the helps of volunteers like Chris and like myself, we get food in there, and therefore the dogs live longer and have a better chance of getting adopted out through the shelter. Right. But again, the shelter does not know every ins and out of the dog. That's yeah. They don't know the temperament as much. They don't know. They're good. They're good. But they're good. But they're not as in-depth. They're not with them seven days a week. Like a foster would right. be. And then, you know, look, this is just kind of outlining everything because you may you may be considering the idea that I, I really want to actually, you know, find a new loved one. I mean, even doing the pet adoption, there was a, an elderly lady that came up. She was really interested in the kid, she loved them, and but she wasn't going to get one. And the only reason why is hers just passed away like two weeks prior. And I can I can understand that. I can really get that. And she couldn't bring herself to adopt a new one. And it was kind of sad. And then, you know, I thought of my own grandmother and what happened to Paws. And I was like, yeah, I get it. I, I totally understand. I, I had a little conversation with her. But, <clears throat> you know, she might be better off going to the shelter. Because she might be looking for, you know, at some point if she's ever thinking of adopting again, the shelter might be a, a good place for her. I wouldn't, you know, we've said it, oh my gosh, how many times that, you know, the cat or dog has to meet your needs and has, has to be the right fit. Well, if, yeah, you have to meet the cat's needs. You have to meet their needs, that, too. But it's both ways. Yeah, it is both ways. Both ways. ways. Uh, you can't just <clears throat> go down and expect to have a cat that sits with you and cuddles with you and ends up wanting to hide. Yes. I mean, look at Double. Double, wasn't it Double that was adopted right off the bat? Yes. And the lady was just like, I, I had a this connection. This is my soulmate. Yeah, it was a soulmate. And it, you know, it, it wasn't because of her, you know, rental situation. But she ended up with a, probably 
her soulmate with um, lady. Lady, thank you. <laughs> thank you for picking me up on that. <laughs> That's all right. And and you know because obviously lady's the mother and very similar temperament, so it probably worked out great. You just you you miss read the situation by a slight mark. I think that, that rescues do a lot, but that's only because we're involved in it, and I see it from a different standpoint. Yes. Um, so, with all this wrapped up, just when you're going to go out to a rescue, know the ins and outs of what they're requiring. <clears throat> There's, <coughs> sorry. There's contracts that you can read through. Right. You can go to their Facebook page. You can go to their websites, and they'll give detailed information. If they don't give detailed information, I would be a little skeptical of that yeah. rescue. Uh, well, but I, I've for the most part, like that. no, I haven't found one with minimum information. Yeah. Um, if you have a 501c3, you've gone through the rigorous Ugh. paperwork, so you're going to be thorough. You really, if you have, if you have no idea anything about 501c3s, look back on, I don't remember off the top of my head what episode, but look for the Tom Hicks episode. He did all 501c3 contracts. You really need to listen to that episode because it's, he explains it. So it's difficult, so therefore they need to be thrown no matter what. Um, but it's worth it. It's really worth their $150 adoption fee. It's worth their $200 adoption fee. Uh, for our cats that we have right now, it's I think like $55 adoption fee. Yeah. And trust me, the rescue spent several hundred dollars on oh, each one of these cats. Easily. And just the time that went into actually... We've had to have special fundraisers just for them. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, I just, you know, be sure what you're getting into. It, it's, it's worth it, you know, when you're trying to find the right companion. And no, it's not them trying to control you. It's them making sure the pet is going to be happy for the rest of its life. Very true. Well, I want to actually, I don't normally always do this. I mean, I do it sometimes, but we have a guest coming on next week, and I'm really excited about it, so I wanted to actually mention it. Um, it's from Blue Cat Cafe. Um, Rebecca Gray will be on the podcast next week, and I'm not going to really tell you much. Google Rebecca uh, uh, Blue. <laughs> I just stumbled all over myself there. Um, Google it. Google Blue Cat Cafe. I, you know, I'm, I'm doing some more research on it, but I mean, she has a GoFundMe page going on. And honestly, it's something to, to really look into. I was really surprised when I came across the other day and got in contact with them. I'm really excited to be able to talk to her because I love the concept of what they're doing. And I don't like what has happened to them as well. So we'll discuss all that next week on the podcast. And I'm looking really forward to that. Me too. Um, and of course, we have a very crazy week ahead of us, as always. But it's, you know, this is like our only like, quiet Saturday, and it's not even quiet. And not just that, we got to get going because our daughter's at a birthday party. I know. And we uh, have to go pick her up. I know, right? <laughs> All right. Well, I'm Chris Green. Have a pet-tastic week. And I'm Sarah Green. Make sure everybody realizes life is so short. Play with your pet. Bye, bye, everybody. Okay, I go in my bedtime. We hope you enjoyed the podcast. If you did. Leave a like on iTunes or YouTube, or leave a comment. Shh, and now the show is over now.